Hi, this is Jim Mann with Home South Southern Cooking. It's so nice to be back with you. I took a little break for about a month and so many of y'all have been writing me asking what's happened. Am I still around? Yes, I am. Uh, I took some time after Christmas and I got sick too, but I'm fine now. So we're going to start a brand new season and I'm going to share one of my favorite desserts with you. I'm surprised I haven't shared it before now. If you live in Mexico, everybody loves Mexican flan. And when you say flan, people go crazy. Oh, I can't make that. It's too hard. It's too hard. It's one of the simplest recipes. I promise you, if you watch me, you will ever make. Okay. And you cannot go wrong with a flan. I'm going to start off first and showing you um, the different kind of pans you can use. I've got just a regular cake pan and I've got a regular bun pan. Now we have to melt sugar to get it caramelized. And if I put sugar in here and I hold it over my oven, I have to be very careful. I can be burnt with this very, very easily. The same thing with this. So what I do is I use a non-stick skillet, get my caramel, and then I pour it into my pan. But I've stepped up a step further. Since I make flan so much, I actually ordered a flan pan, but you don't need that. That's why I'm showing you this, okay? The only reason why you need a flan pan is because you have to have a covering while you're baking it. And that's simple. Just take your cake plate, cut a piece of foil to fit on it, and I'm just going to go around this and I'm just going to seal the edges. See how quick that was and how fast that was? I'm just going to seal my edges all the way around. And it's the same thing as a pan, okay? So now that we got that out of the way, we'll start making our flan. And what I'm going to do first is we're going to make our, uh, our, our caramel sauce over at the stove. So I'll meet you at the stove. Okay, I've got about three-fourths cups of sugar. Some people just use like a half a cup, but I really love the, car the caramel sauce on the flan. And when I've got this on, I've got this like over sort of a medium heat, and I'm going to let this stay here. Now, what this is going to do as I'm going to stir this, and once I start stirring this, I will not be able to stop. Uh, this will start bubbling and start turning yellow. And then after it turns yellow, it'll get darker and darker until we get a beautiful caramel color. So it takes a few minutes for this to get hot and to get going. So let me get this going. Once it starts turning color, I'll come back to you. Okay, this is about halfway there. As you can see, the sugar is starting to lump up, okay? Uh, and it'll get real lumpy. So I just don't want you to think when you got this part, oh, I've done something wrong, because you haven't. So I'm gonna continue melting it, and when it gets ready, I'll come back. As you can see, it's already started turning yellow, and I'm trying to melt all the rest of the sugar, but we're gonna get a nice golden caramel color. Uh, we just have to keep on stirring. And what I wanna tell you, when I say you do not want to get this on you, you do not want to get this on you. This will take the skin right off of you. But you see how it's beginning to get a beautiful dark caramel color? That's what we want. We want a dark, dark caramel color in here. So I'm going to finish cooking this and come back over to show you. We'll put it in our flan pan. Okay, I've got it. You can see it's a real dark caramel color. And we'll pour it right into my flan pan here. And, and to see the beauty of using this pan, it all just comes rolling right out because that would, would be really difficult to get out if it didn't come out because that sugar gets really, really hard in the pan, okay? So, now notice I'm taking the top of this and I'm not gonna touch the bottom, that's burning. I'm gonna take the top of this and I'm gonna roll my flan around in here until I get it all over the bottom. I'm gonna get my caramel sauce until I get it all over the bottom. Once I get it over the bottom, I'll shake it a second and our, our caramel topping is now ready. I'm gonna set this aside, and then we'll start working on actually making the custard for it. Okay, I've got my blender here. This is so, so simple. All right, I'm gonna use eight eggs. Some people use six eggs, some use eight. I find it works better for me if I use six, uh, eight eggs, I'm sorry. So I'll put all the eggs in here, then we'll blend it up. Okay, I've got my egg, eight eggs into my blender. And what I'm gonna do next is I've got one can of carnation 
milk. I'm gonna put the can of carnation milk right in there. So I've got eight eggs, a can of carnation milk. Very simple so far. The second thing, I've got, the third thing is just a can of sweetened condensed milk. Now that's going to give you sweetness, so you want to try to get all of it out of here as possible. So I've got three things so far. I've got eight eggs, I've got my car uh, carnation evaporated milk, and now I've got my sweetened condensed milk. To that, I'm going to add, oh, a tablespoon or two of vanilla. I just sort of cite this. I've been making it so long, I kind of know what's good in it. Okay, I'm gonna put the top back on here. And the good thing about this is we wanna get this really well blended because I want the eggs and all of it to be as one to make the custard. So I'm gonna put this on and we'll blend it and when it gets finished blending, I'll come back to you. Okay, this is blended really well now. I'm going to take this off, take my sharp tines out of here. So, okay, now that's my custard mix. You see how easy that was. Now I'm going to go back over here and take my caramel. Now this caramel is already set up, and if we listen, you'll hear it crackle when I pour this in. That was one little crackle. You see how easy that was. Now, this would be the time that if you had your cake pan, you put your rolls wrap over top of it. But since I have my flan pan, I just put my flan top on it and I'm gonna hook it over. My oven's been set at 350. I'm gonna take this now what I've got. I've got a great big baking dish and I'm gonna set my plan right, flan right in the middle of it. And I'm gonna fill this full of water, about halfway full of water. That's about halfway. I'm gonna put this in my oven for an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 20 minutes, and then I'll come back. Okay, our timer just went off. Our flan has been in the oven uh, for uh, uh, an hour and 20 minutes. I'm gonna reach in here and, oh, it's hot, 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 hot. Now, this is at the point where if you used your cake pan, you would take the Reynolds wrap off. But since I've got a flan pan, I'm gonna take the top off of this. Oh, look at that, steamy. See, it's kind of shaky still. I'm gonna let this just set here and cool for an hour or so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put my top back on it after it's completely cool. I'll put my Reynolds wrap back on my cake pan when it's completely cool and put this in the, in the refrigerator for about three hours. Then it'll be ready to serve. Okay, our timer just went off. Welcome back. It's, it's the next morning. I went ahead and put this in the refrigerator and uh, I went to bed early last night. So I just took it out. You can see the frost is on it. Uh, I'm gonna take the top of it off. Remember I told you last night when it cooled down, to put the top back on it, I'll put the Reynolds wrap back on your pan and put it in the refrigerator for you know, three or four hours. What I'm gonna do now is I've got a little paring knife. I'm just gonna go around the edge of this just to make sure that it's loose all the way around. Flan has been around for a long time. It started in Rome with the Roman soldiers they would make it as a, as a meal, a uh, dish with a meal. They would serve it with fish and they would serve it with, um, you know, just regular food. And then of course, it caught on in Spain and somebody put honey on it and all of a sudden it became a dessert. Well, and when it came to the new world and came to, to Mexico, uh, that's when the sugar was added and the flan really took off and really took its place. But this is a national treasure. This is something that they make in Mexico all the time. And it's one of my favorites and you can't go wrong. You see how easy it was. I'm gonna take, I just, I found this, this bowl in a store here. Uh, you can use a regular plate, but this is perfect uh, because it has a little lip on it. So if you can find a tray like that, 
But anyhow, I'm just going to take my, my, my pan. I'm going to flip it upside down. A little lift up on it. Oh, look at that. That's just beautiful. Uh, hold on one second. Let me get my spatula. Okay, I got one, you know, my spatula. I want to make sure that I get all this delicious juice out on top of this because when you cut a piece, you want to make sure that you have um, some of the juice on it. Okay. And now the best part of all is actually cutting it. So I'm going to take my knife. Cut a little triangle out of here. Look how beautiful that is. I'll put it on my plate, and if I was going to serve this to someone, what I would do is I'll put it on the plate. I would take a little bit of my, my caramel sauce and sort of drizzle it back and forth on my plate to serve it to them. Okay, you saw how simple this was, but this is the true taste. Look at that, just beautiful. If you're not familiar with flan, you need to make this. Oh, this is so good. So custarded and the caramel is fantastic. Um, in the next couple of days, we'll bring you two other flans that I make. But try this one, you can see it's so simple, just you know, three or four ingredients. I hope you try it. Thank you so much for following me on Facebook and YouTube. I have really missed being coming to, being in your house and coming to see you. I'll see you really, really soon with a brand new recipe. Until next time, this is Jim in Mexico saying you take care of yourself. Give yourself a big hug, and I'll talk to you soon. God bless.